All right, I think most of these questions, the border on these two, most of the issues, the border on these two questions. One, the coming of the president, and the second one, whether or not we have the constitutional powers to, to make invitation. And I'm going to go straight to address that. I'm happy you mentioned that you've not received any official communication from us with regards to the coming of the president or not. As you are aware, when that motion was passed last week, it was rowdy. Rowdy because the House some people wanted the president to be there, some people didn't want, felt otherwise. But the majority of the House, through the mandate of their constituents, moved the resolution, even against the position of the Speaker. Because if you were there, the Speaker struggled to make sure that the House, you know, told the line of using an alternative approach to it. But you know, the decision of the parliament overrides the presiding officers. Because to do otherwise is to be biased and to be undemocratic. Because it is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So at the, at, at, at the end of the day, at all times, it is the opinion of the people that will take the day. Having said that, as a mark of honor, The leadership of the House sent a delegate, the person of the Speaker, but one of the, the highest delegates, the Speaker, the Deputy Speaker, and the leader, majority leader of the House, as a mark of honor and respect to engage the President beyond the resolution of the House, which was not compelling Mr. President that everybody put it as, summoning Mr. President as everybody puts it. No. That resolution was inviting, invitation. And I would like our discussions to remain within that scope, that the House invited Mr. President. There is a difference between summon and invitation. It's a difference between compelling and inviting. So the ability to you know, resolve this will help us to know the mood of the house, the intention of the house, why the invitation. They were obliged when they had the meeting with Mr. President. Mr. President, President I assured them it was a discussion that was had between more than one person. Like I mentioned, the audience included the deputy speaker as well as the majority leader. And we believe in the integrity of the word of Mr. President, that he, was, he showed commitment to address Nigerians, not just the parliament, to address Nigerians. The date was not specified. When I was here last week, I gave you tentative period scope of period. But as the days goes by, it became a bit narrowed to Thursday. There were communication, official communication, from the presidency committing to the position of Mr. Speaker that the president has accepted to come. So the speaker and the leadership of the house, we are not operating on the frolic of their own. It was backed up by the position coming from the presidency. So up to that extent, we felt very honored by Mr. President that he communicated his desire to engage with Nigerians. And also his aid also made it more obvious that the presidency has shown interest to address the parliament. As you know, what we operate is a democracy that is hinged on party supremacy. 
This is not a military rule where one man takes a decision. Beyond the president lies the supremacy of the party. The president answers to the party. He is the leader of the party. He is the overall of the party. But he is not more powerful than the party. He is there as the president on the platform of APC, on a card given to him by the party. So if he took a position as the president of the Federal Republic and his political party that is supreme weighed on him to alter his position, if he is truly a party man, he must have obliged his party why the discussion goes on. That is on the platform of partisan politics and democracy. That is hierarchy. We have not received any formal communication. Like my friend of point said, we have not given you formal official, official communication. It's only because we've not received up to this moment an official communication. The time now is about past one o'clock. We've not received on Thursday, the 10th, we are yet to receive a formal communication from the office of the president stating that this appointment has been canceled or shifted. We've not gotten any communication from the president saying that I am no more coming. All you have read about has been from unofficial sources. The question then becomes, what is the relevance of this visit? Many have been asking this question. Is it morally, is it legally right to have this engagement? Nigerians have been addressing this question from yesterday till today. And I'm sure the parliament does not have a different voice from the voice of Nigerians. If you really want to know the easiest way of knowing what the parliament feels about an issue is to feel the pulse of those who have sent them to the parliament. That's the easiest way to know our position on anything. Now, the question as to whether or not we have the legal position to invite Mr. President. <laughs> Somehow, I would have said, let's leave the interpretation, judicial interpretation of the provisions of the Constitution to be in the hands of the judiciary. But as a lawyer, well tutored in constitutional law, I can assure you the parliament did not act in error. And this I say, based on the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that establish us, even up to the smallest committee of the House, by Section 62, as long as it's established by Section 62 of the Constitution, There is a mandate, and that mandate is well expressed in 8889, which must be read in conjunction with one another. If you want to address the question as to whether or not the House as a committee of the whole, is investigating insecurity, money appropriated for security, inefficiency in security, or any petition around security. If the House have the right to look into that, the answer is yes, we have the right to look into that. The provision of the law says that granted 
by Section 4 of the Armed Forces Act. The President is the Chairman of Council, Security Council. The Armed Forces Act is a piece of legislation made by the Parliament. The Police Act, I name them, they are pieces of legislation made by the Parliament. And it is the provision of 89 that we have the right to investigate issues bordering on any issue, anything that we, are, we have the capacity to make laws on, to legislate on. It's called legislative competence. We have legislative competence to legislate on all this. And therefore, if there are things that we need to find out in such areas, the law in 89 empowers us to invite. It says any person, anybody, for the purposes of obtaining pieces of evidence, either in oral form or in documentary form. And that includes everybody. That's the position of the law. But there is a, an estate of the law which is the power to arrest, to command presence of Mr. President. That particular one, because of Section 308 of the Constitution, that gives immunity to the President, you cannot exercise that. The power of discretion or over the operational uh, activities of uh, the Armed Forces, I think it was referring to Section 218 of the Constitution. It is not in doubt. That is the truth that it is there. The power of discretion as found in section 67.1 of the Constitution, where it is said that the president has a right, the president may visit the National Assembly to address certain issues. That is discretionary. But if the House is investigating any issue that borders on all the places that we make laws for, the provision of 88-89 is that we can invite people to give us evidence. We can ask people. But is that what is happening now? That is the question that you should ask yourself. Is the president under investigation? That is the question you should be asking yourself. Did we invite the president for investigation? The answer is no. We invited to have an engagement that will help us review few things that will help us know whether the strategy we are using now is in order or it is not in order to engage, to have a feedback mechanism. Can we command the president to attend? We cannot. But can we invite him? Yes, the law says we can invite him and any other person. That is the position of the law. So I don't know, Punch, if uh, that issue has been addressed. The position of the Constitution is very clear on this. And as we speak, the President has not given us any formal position on whether or not he's coming. Like I said, this is about 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. And uh, I also believe in uh, party supremacy. If the party says he should not attend to any event, we will not hold it against Mr. President. If his, uh, if his party says, we, we, this is our position on this issue, does that stop us from what we are supposed to do as parliament? Because in parliament, we have various parties. The, the parliament is not APC parliament. And I don't speak only for APC, I speak for the entire parliament. So the, the parliament has a duty, and that duty is to carry the mandate of the people and find out what we are doing about it as parliament in finding solutions for them. Do we have the right to exercise that? The answer is yes. 
what are we going to be challenging in court? Because the position of the AG is not the position of the court. The AG is not the judge. And neither is the AG the spokesperson of APC. How can you take the position of the AG as the position of the party? Is he the spokesman of APC? I started by telling you we've not received any official communication because in that official communication, the reasons will be adumbrated. Why Mr. President is not able to come? Every other thing is guesswork. Every other thing is an infringement of the imagination of those who are operating social media. And that is the truth. And our channel of communication is not with the AG. The AG is not part of the presidency. The AG is not a judge. So his position cannot be seen to be a judicial position that needs to be contested in court. I don't know if that is clear. An AG is not the spokesperson of APC. So his position cannot be seen to be the position of APC. I only gave you an analogy. And that is at that realm, I want you to keep it at that realm. I want to ins still insist that there is no official communication coming from the presidency to counter the initial position that there is an invitation extended and there is a willingness to attend to that invitation. Until we receive a contrary position in a formal form, we are reasons where why they will not be coming will be explained. It will be difficult for me to jump the gun at this point. We are still on Thursday. The letter has not come. If it comes tomorrow, you know some of you called me yesterday and I told you I have not received any official communication. And that is still the position till now. And the speaker in his wisdom also, when a member of the House came via um, uh, um, point of order on privilege, you, you saw his ruling. Is it different from what I'm saying? Oh, sorry, please. You saw his ruling. It's not different from what I'm saying. His ruling was that this communication has not been gotten. We should wait. And that is what I want to tell the press today. We've not received a formal communication. You should wait. That is what you are taking out from this conversation. You should wait until we receive a formal communication from the presidency. In that formal com uh, communication, if it's not coming, the reasons will be highlighted. And we will communicate that reason to you. Because he has already committed that he's coming. You saw it. It, it wasn't us saying it. They made commitment. So if they, are, if they are changing any commitment, that is also a channel of communication from where we can communicate to you. So on the coming of the president, there is no official information as to that effect. When we receive it, we'll make it available to you. I, I think I've addressed most of the things you raised there. Is there another one that is asking? Oh, no, 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 no. You see, it, it, it's not about... Uh, personal disappointment. I speak for the house. I don't speak for myself. To ask me a personal question is to ask me if I'm the spokesperson of Benjamin Carlo. No. I'm the spokesperson of 360 people. And the feelings of these people at the moment cannot be determined because we have not received official communication. So until they receive official communication and I feel their pause then I'll be able to know whether there's a place for my uh, personal disappointment or not. For now, even at all times, I don't bring in my personal uh, feelings into the job I'm, I've, I've been asked to do. But the feeling of the house, as it is now, you cannot gauge it because there is no official communication as of now. The executive or so. You were there, I saw the drama that played out that day. So we are not saying, he, no, he went back to go and no, no, speaker will never do such thing. Whatever, whenever the house has taken a position, is a very, uh, it's a man of integrity. He will stand by the house from beginning to end, and will not allow the house to be ridiculed. So is the deputy speaker, who is a man of integrity. So is the majority leader, who is one of the oldest seven members of the parliament in Nigeria, and who has integrity proven over the years. They will never leave the house at one point and go behind to do something different from the position of the house. So I just wanted to clear that. On the issue of um, how many people that accompanied them to see the president, the provision of our law is in Section 60. That we, the House, we choose how we regulate ourselves. We decide how we do our things. And um, I know that in back-channel diplomacy, which we are promoting, which is a legislative diplomacy, uh, you use... You use 
you know, people that will help you drive the value you want to achieve. Uh, if you are going to see a PDP president and you go with ABGA and SDP members, the president looks at them, he will not open up the way he's supposed to open up. So you will fail in that negotiation. So you look at what is your strong, your strength that you can go for that, uh, you know, back channel diplomacy. So in this case, the leadership of the house thought it wise that it would be better to take people that is respected by Mr. President, by you know their leadership position, by their romance in the party. They are fellow family members in the party. If they speak to him, they, he will find that they are not biased, that they don't want to set a trap for him. So it's just it was just a strategy that will help us drive the outcome we wanted to achieve, which they actually achieved. And I give it to Mr. President for obliging them, for telling them that uh, he will come and see the, the parliament. So it worked. At that level, it, it really worked.